in a lively discussion, Bill Maher, Ben Jones, and Ann Coulter explore the complexities of the border crisis. Maher points out the exposed hypocrisy in sanctuary cities when faced with an influx of immigrants. Ben Jones acknowledges the issue of people exploiting the system, but emphasizes the need for congressional action to address asylum laws. Ann Coulter counters arguments supporting open borders, highlighting the economic impact on existing residents and expressing frustration with the current political deadlock. Don't miss, what are sanctuary cities and how are they connected to the border crisis? What role do asylum laws play in the current immigration situation? How do different political parties contribute to or hinder efforts to address the border crisis? It would also allow, I would imagine, that the sanctuary cities, the, the hypocrisy was the, exposed there, but it's when they started to se <laughs> send the immigrants to yeah, those cities. Said, Never mind. The, I mean, <laughs> Chicago. Sure, New York, sure. Yeah, they some I, of the most liberal people are like, oh, this yeah, doesn't work mind. for us. Listen, I, 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 Jimmy, you're, you're, you're right on that. Let, let, me just say, let me just say something here. People have been coming here and gaming our system. That is true. People have been coming here and gaming our system. That is true. The public's concerns about certain individuals exploiting the immigration system must be addressed directly and resolved. It's like, it's like you know, somebody figured out a quasi-legal way to jump the turnstiles into the subway. It is like somebody figured out a quasi-legal way to jump the turnstiles into the subway. Within public discussions, the issue of immigration stands out as a complex and contentious topic. It disrupts established norms and systems, constantly questioning their legitimacy. And suddenly now the subway is full of people who didn't pay. That's what's going on at the border. People are jumping right. the turnstile, and you need to fix that. But to say that, that Joe Biden could do it unilaterally is just not, in fact, true. There are things he can do, but our asylum laws were passed by Congress. They were signed by the president. The courts have ruled. There is a chance to change it. I would love to see a smarter, better asylum process. I'd love the six months. I don't want people, you know, waiting in, in, in vain with no ability to work. I would love to see a smarter, better asylum process. I'd love the six months. I don't want people waiting in vain with no ability to work. We understand the need for a more efficient and empathetic asylum process, acknowledging the many difficulties faced by those seeking refuge. However, this recognition doesn't diminish the importance of maintaining order and control. We could fix it, but here's the thing. Democrats gave up almost everything we care about to get something done, and Republicans slammed the door in our face. Democrats gave up almost everything we care about to get something done, and Republicans slammed the door in our face. The phrase indicates frustration and disappointment, suggesting that Democrats have faced resistance from Republicans in their efforts to find a solution. It is now the Republicans... No, I said that's why I think this guy won this race. We yeah. need no I think people get that. And if it's I could just true. correct, and now, obviously other Congresses have said the president can stop illegals coming in. We need no people to get that. And if I got this correct, other Congresses have said the president can stop illegals coming in. The writer supports a strong stance on border security, echoing conservative views that emphasize the president's crucial responsibility in overseeing immigration to safeguard the nation's welfare. But I do, I do want to correct one, Gennard, because this is a big argument on the pro-open border side, and that is that the economy is better, the GDP goes up because we have more. No, that's because there are more people. That doesn't help us here. The economy is better, the GDP goes up. No, that's because there are more people. That doesn't help us here. The Democratic conversation often questions whether the economic growth fueled by immigration genuinely benefits the existing citizens. I firmly believe that the economy should actively enhance the welfare of the local population. So, for example, say I move into your guest room, I won't be contributing nothing. I will be, your cable bill is going to go up, your water bill is going to go up, your heating bill is going to go up. But the GDP of your, of your household is going to go way up because that's all an economy is, more people. So but immigrants not, coming in and taking health care services, food not. services, welfare, buying things, even if it isn't much, that drives the economy up. That doesn't help the people already here. It's, it's bad not, for yeah. you. There are it's winner. good for Ann. Immigrants coming in and taking health care services, food services, welfare, buying things, even if it isn't much, that drives the economy up. That doesn't help the people already here. It's bad for you, good for them. 
Understanding the effects of immigration involves recognizing the subtle differences in how it can affect the welfare of existing citizens, overall economic expansion, and the tangible benefits that emerge for communities. Well, it, like any big issue, there's yeah. winners and losers. It's true. The people who are just above immigrants on the economic scale, they always get fucked it, when immigrants come into the country. But that's, the, that's No, the, everybody, but, all but taxpayers Not do. everybody. The debate among Maher, Jones, and Coulter delves into the challenges of the border crisis, touching on sanctuary cities, asylum laws, and the economic impact of immigration, while Jones advocates for legislative changes. Coulter emphasizes the negative consequences on existing residents. The public gains insights into the multifaceted nature of the issue, realizing the need for comprehensive solutions that balance humanitarian concerns and economic considerations. Ben Jones openly acknowledging systemic abuse, drawing an analogy to leaping from turnstiles onto a subway, and demonstrating empathetic comprehension of the challenges posed by illegal immigration. This aligns with a democratic ethos that prioritizes the well-being of existing communities, underscoring concerns for the U.S. population, particularly those positioned just above immigrants on the economic scale. The interpretation suggests Van Jones' desire for a more intelligent, refined asylum process, grappling with concerns about waiting periods, recognizing the pivotal role of the refugee process, and emphasizing the imperative for enhancement. The acknowledgement by Van Jones of the intricate nature of immigration issues is evident, recognizing both winners and losers in his discourse. Consideration should be given to the multifaceted nature of social challenges and the fundamental aspects of cultural and social safety. It appears to encapsulate Van Jones' expression of frustration with the Democratic Party's efforts and the subsequent resistance from the Republican Party. This frustration arises when challenges and compromises within the political system fail to achieve mutual understanding, presenting hurdles for two parties with divergent priorities. Shifting focus to Ann Coulter's economic arguments, particularly her analogy involving occupying someone's guest room, Concerns emerge about the impact of immigration on existing resources and the potential strain on an economy that may not necessarily benefit current residents. Ann Coulter's economic arguments articulate apprehension regarding the economic repercussions of immigration on established populations, emphasizing financial responsibility and conservative values that prioritize the well-being of current citizens. This discourse hints at inevitable trade-offs and intricacies associated with the immigration debate, emblematic of a democratic idea wherein individuals confront complexity and make choices amid conflicting and in intricate realities. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content. And although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.